My name is David Kechner. I'm not Rich Eisen, although we have a similar hairline and skills. You got it. Uh, in studio, <laughs> in studio, we have uh, Mr. Bill Burr. What's up, David? I, I love seeing you here. Yeah, I love being here. Uh, today, you have a special that is on streaming right now on new Netflix. It's your new special. That's right. Uh, I'm sorry you feel that way. Exactly. Which I feel is a little sarcastic, maybe. I, what I like about it is it's a, it's a, uh, it's not an apology, but sounds like one. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And it great. just seems like, not even just in stand-up, just like so many, everybody has to apologize now, has to go on TV and apologize. It's just like, to who? For Whoever yeah. you're pissed off, just call them up and apologize. Why do you have to go on TV like a little kid and get, like, scolded? And uh, I don't know. I just think it's a lot of BS in that, you know, the, like the, the little tiny movement that has to happen on the Internet and all of a sudden they run around like the sky's falling and right. everybody's outraged. I'm trying to remember the last time I was outraged. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever been outraged. So outraged. <laughs> I, I, I've been annoyed. I, unless it's been traffic. Yeah. And, you know, someone, somebody cuts me off in traffic, it annoys the hell out of me. But at no point do I feel like they owe me an apology. They should call you? Yeah. Like your, your, your license plate? I was offended. Plate. Yeah. Your license I literally took my, li my life in his hands, and I, I still don't feel he owes me an apology. <laughs> I feel it's my fault for being there. It's just part of the hunt. What was I wearing? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Bill Burr, not a victim. Yeah, Bill Burr, not a victim. The, yeah, blaming the victim. I'm, I'm blaming myself. I saw you last night. Uh, for a rap party for one of your television shows you're working we on. Were on uh, we were at the library. We were, we were reading books. Re reading books, mostly religious literature? That's right. No, I was boozing it up last night. I actually had to do a radio tour this morning. Yeah. And I was so drunk the night before I woke up, I was still buzzed. I was like five, like when, uh, the only time I snore is uh, when I'm drunk. So my wife just tells me to go out on the couch, which, you know, out of respect, you know, I do it because I wouldn't have, wouldn't have to apologize. So, uh... <laughs> I was laying on my couch and I just immediately woke up in the morning and I slurred into some story about my pit bull. Um, I don't even remember the first hour of it. What's your pit bull's name? Cleo. Cleo, is that, that's a girl? Yeah, it is. She okay. was already named. We found her by the LA River. How do you know she's already named? Well, the person who found her named her. And then, uh, dude, I feel like I'm a true detective. He just caught me there. My <laughs> wife. But if you were a true detective, wouldn't I, be, my, wouldn't I whisper it? Huh? Would I whisper it? Yeah, this, and this, would, this, wouldn't have, this would be happening in the future. Ah. And then we'd go back and we would have hair. Right. And then you would show me by the river. It's true, Woody Harrelson. <laughs> we would have hair. No, let me go back. If my, the person was working with my wife. She found it by the L.A. River and then gave it to uh, us to foster it. And then I fell in love with the dog and then we kept it. I was thinking in my act, just because that part isn't funny, I just got right to the point of we found it or she found it. You don't, I don't want to remember. control. That's I don't from uh, You People Are All the Same. I think it was from Let It Go. Uh, I, well, okay. You know better than me. It's your stuff. Hey, you know, I'm not trying to be aggressive. It's from here. You People Are All the Same. Let It Go? Yeah. It's from Let It Go. So I would think if I was coming on as a guest, you would watch all of my stand up clips. I've seen it. And as I brought <laughs> up each joke, you should be able to just bring it up. Like one of those fantasy football I, I, nerds. I, 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 I listen to your podcast. I mean, I normally listen anyway, but I listened especially close today because I knew you were coming in. Oh, cool. You talked about God. I was Girl. so excited. I thought Rich was going to be here. And then when I showed up to see this guy I was drinking with last night, I'm just like, this is just, it's a really like a letdown. I know. I know. So if I look into the logo when you're talking, that's just me missing Rich. Well, he's wearing the tie like <laughs> no. the logo. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Tell you what, Rich Eisen wouldn't dress up for you. Rich Eisen wears a sweater and nothing else. That's why I was excited to come here. Oh! <laughs> that, that quick. How many specials have you done? Uh, I, this is my fourth hour-long special, and I, I've done a half hour for HBO. I did a half hour for Comedy Central back in the day. What? You, what? How old were you when you started doing stand-up? I was 23, almost 24. Started in 1992. 92. 46 now for the people who are going to add I that up. A, I kind of have a question for, for both of you, because obviously you both do stand-up. And from when you started to where you guys are at now, how has it kind of changed with what you can get away with joke-wise because of the internet and Twitter and that you, reaction. You can get away with anything as long as it's funny. That whole, that whole crap about, you know, is the culture changing in the comedy clubs with these people like, like everybody's on pins and needles is complete BS. It's a total non-story. Anytime, like, three people complain, they act like the sky is falling. Yeah, yeah. You know what kills me about all of that stuff is whenever they show the clip that offends people... They show the clip and the crowd's laughing. It's like a joke worked. So if you're standing in a club in front of 300 people and 290 of them laughed, that's, that's, 
that worked. Yeah, has it made it So hard? then if somebody comes in and gets offended, it's like, it's so stupid. It's like, dude, this is not a home game when you go into a comedy club. This is an away game. This is our house. You decided to come here. The only way I feel like you can get offended as, as, a, as a fan would be like uh, if you hired a comic at, at a private party and you right. said, okay, these are the parameters. This is going to be the audience performed between these two lines. And if you agree, you're supposed to be a pro and come in there and stay there. Now, if you go outside those lines, yeah, then they get offended and you owe them an apology and they might not even pay you. But you can't go to a comedy club and be, oh, excuse me, I have a head cold. <laughs> and that's very <laughs> offensive to me. Those people who get offended are so friggin' selfish because they will sit there through 200 subjects and it's all funny until it comes around to their world. Then all of a sudden they're fanning themselves. The next thing you know, you're on TV on a split screen with a blogger. It's just like, why am I even talking to you? Do you like have any I topics? If I get offended by NASA, should I should sit on TV next to an astronaut? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm, I, I, am, it's, I don't even get Do me Do you have any topics that. that you won't touch? Yeah, I think every comic has stuff that they don't think is necessarily, I would say, uh, uh, mentally challenged kids. Just, you know, is not something that I feel I need to, <laughs> right. enough other subjects. I would think if somebody has a kid like that, the amount of uh, pain and, and uh, you know, time that they have to, it's unbelievable. They're saints. So I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, but that's, but I wouldn't say that because I made that choice, I'm now the, the god of comedy and you have to, <laughs> right. you, know, you know, whatever you want to talk about is fine with me. But like, yeah, I, I have a few things I want. I think you're the god of comedy. Uh, do you I remember think the, you're the god of this room right now. Right now. And I'm not even Rich Eisen. Huh? You know, I'm not rich still. Yeah. Okay. Well, I actually said I, when I come here, I want the god of the room to be there. And they told Rich to hit the bricks. Oh, nice. I like they, this. They, they brought you in. The chip. We're going to commercial? No, no, no. We got about two minutes till two commercial, minutes. and then we're, we're still got about two. These guys got to keep me on task. Uh, do you remember your first set? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what I said, but I remember it. Yes. You don't remember the content? Uh... Yeah, I was talking about commuting to school and not having any friends and being a loser. <laughs> I, <remember that. laughs> so, I started off autobiographical. Whatever the hell you say. Autobiographical. Autobiographical. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, this is why I hang out with him. He helps me finish the big your, words. Your elocution is so much better than mine. I'm still trying to is that a re word? redeem myself. Elocution? That's Akbar. a good one. It's like, much like it's a color. Is that what it is? Elocution's a color. <laughs> You're sitting You know in, what? I would actually believe that. What? That sounds like a blue. Right, or a coffee. An electric elo eloquation. Yeah, an eloquation. Uh, it, I got a sweater for Christmas. What color was it? Electric eloquation. Eloquacious. He's quite eloquacious. That's not sound like a name now. All right. All right, I think we abused that. That's Comedy fine. We'll, I, we'll, I think we ringed all the we'll laughs out of that. Oh, my point earlier was saying I saw you last <laughs> night. We have to do a comedy telethon. That's what we're going to do. All right. It's just whatever we even get remotely near funny, when we just ring it out, just beat it against the wall. Stop the puddle. That's right. Stop the puddle until all the water's yeah. out and go, oh, this mud's so much fun, isn't it? <laughs> uh, the reason I saw you last night is the rap party for F is for Family, yes, sir. which is a Netflix animated show mm -hmm. that you uh, wrote and produced and starred in. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I had a lot of help. I was with uh, so Mike, Mike Price. It's you. Mike no, Price Mike, is he's amazing. A, yeah. amazing. From The Simpsons, uh, Vince Vaughn's company, uh, um, Wild, Wild West. West. Um, got behind it with Peter Billingsley, Mike Lagnese, all those guys. And then uh, Mike Price put together this murderer's row Unbelievable. of writers. And you were Tom, kind enough. Tom Giannis. Tom Giannis. You were kind Richardson, enough to uh, invite me Emily to do a Towers. voice on the show. I, it was so funny, I couldn't get through a lot of it. A lot of times we're doing the record and it's making me so laugh, I can't even uh, laugh so hard, I can't even do the lines. That was my favorite part, watching you die and laughing. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Yeah, he plays a guy, uh, Bob Pogo. I can't really, I mean, it, it's an animated show, so unfortunately we just wrapped and we're just getting the characters drawn and that type of stuff. And so it'll be out like a year from now, but yeah. I think it's gonna be, uh, right. I, got, I got high hopes for it. You're gonna stick around. Absolutely. This is the Rich Eisen Show. I'm not Rich Eisen. My name is David Kechter. I'm here with Bill Burr, who will be back. So you better be back. You are listening uh, to part of Bill Burr's new special, I'm Sorry You Feel That Way, streaming right now on Netflix. Uh, Netflix is really coming strong with a lot of great comedy specials. Yeah, and, I've been uh, with those guys for a number of years. So they've been great. You've got um, how, many, how many on there, two or three? They've had all four of mine on at different times. I'm such a big fan. I know all of it. Yeah. I was just seeing if you knew. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the last two I've, I've done, I went straight to them. Okay. So uh, I haven't made a lot of smart moves in this business, but Netflix was the one that I kind of saw them for what they were. Uh, 
I mean, it was easy because I had my special was on a different channel where they had commercials and it was edited and I didn't get much. And then the second it went to Netflix, all, all of a sudden it wasn't censored. And um, that's when it really started. I started seeing bigger ticket sales and that type of thing. And Is I was, that right? Yeah. And I was just like, all right. You know, and for some people, the other channel worked better for them. But for me, just like going to Netflix, you know. To people who are really interested filth, in something. Your filth. My uncensored How about your brilliance? And, and filth. No. Your, um, your, your illuminescent mind. My eradicated uh, your elect beautiful, electrocities. Your, your beautiful elocution. Um, yeah, Netflix has 17 million subscribers worldwide. Plus, uh, a friend of mine, Miles Fisher, once said, the, I forget the name of the guy that started Netflix, but the brilliance of what he did was it started as delivering, you know, DVDs to your house. Yeah. But it was called Netflix, which he already knew. He already knew. He was waiting oh, on the right? technology to catch up to his idea wow. to stream, right? Yeah. See, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah, I'm just out there telling dick jokes. That's where you... <laughs> <laughs> tell you what. I bet you tell... You don't tell a lot of dick jokes. Oh, I've you know something? Act. If I have... If a unique thing happened with me and my buddy, I call him Chuck. <laughs> Chuck? No, I don't have a name. He's, he's like Clint Eastwood. I bet your you wife he does. He's like Clint Eastwood in the Drifters, those Drifter movies. He's just the stranger that comes to town. From the, the Italian westerns? Yeah, he does. And he, I throw a little blanket over him. <laughs> and then he, sh then he shoots off his gun. Yeah, he's got his hand on his hip, you know, little little, put a little cigar in there. Sorry, not, disgusting. Not See that? nice, you laugh at Bill, you're Apologize. from you're from Boston proper? Or, or Worcester? No, I'm from, the, I'm from the safe suburbs of uh, outside of Boston. You I, always, I always say, yeah, I do. Because uh, ever since uh, uh, Goodwill Hunting came out, if you oh. say you're anywhere near, you know, Boston, like, dude, you're from Southie, did you, you know, do you steal cars, do you like apples, you know, whatever the hell it is. It's like, <laughs> are you good at math? It's like, no, no, apples are all right. But I sucked at math. <laughs> and, so uh, there goes yeah. half my questions. I mean, do you, are you... Do you no? So you're from a, a southerly suburb of Boston. Yeah, I kind of lived. I lived in a couple of towns, but mainly uh, the South Shore. Okay. They now say. they have athletics in in Boston. They have professional oh, yeah. athletics. Yeah, it okay. is a it is a hardcore hardcore sports town. Well, they enjoy their sports in in yes, the Boston. They do. I don't know if you've heard about this. I have not. Yeah. Uh, I'm here to get educated by, sports, by Bill Burr. Family. Sports. Boo. No sports booze. Maybe we. Ka. Families. Yeah, something like that. Did you say weed? Church. Weed. Weed, yeah. No, I don't, it's more of a drinking place as far as I knew. So, uh, your favorite sport is what? Have you had to pick one? You don't have to. Uh, but I mean, like, top two or what I'm can't big, you I'm miss? I'm a big hockey guy. You like hockey? I'm watching my Bruins getting their butts kicked on this Did West Coast Did you go to the game trip. on Tuesday? I went. It was awful. No, I had a, uh, I had a, I had a gig and uh, so I couldn't make that. Yeah, but this is the thing I, I like about the Bruins right now is we actually have major injuries. Char is out. Right. Um, and a lot, uh, McQuaid broke his thumb and all that. But so all these young kids are getting this ice time early in the year when it's not as bad, you know, losing games now. Um, and I think that, you know, later on in the year when everybody comes back Hopefully. and you want to rest some guys a little bit. Yeah, the West Coast trip's yeah, been terrible. Yeah, that uh, these yeah. guys can handle it. So, I mean, we only lost one nothing to the Kings. To the right? Kings. Yeah, empty netter, two, no yeah. Yeah, the empty net. Come on. Right. Whatever. So I, but I, I watched the first period last night. It was 2 nothing, And uh, I think I jinxed them because I was like, 2 nothing over the shacks. You know, I wrote the, the Boston accent thing. And then I came back. We lost like 7-4. to four. We somehow <laughs> let up seven goals in two periods. So. so that wasn't good. Don't put it all on your shoulders. No, I think it was me. I think right. I did. I would say I'm a football. I like college football. Big SEC fan. You're bigger college football than you are uh, professional? Um, I don't know. I, I love NFL football, but at the SEC, I just kind of got how, caught up how in How does it. a guy from Boston, when Boston College was kind of, they were good when you were growing up there. Yeah. No, how, no, I, I, the still root for, I still root for Boston College, but the whole, was it the ACC or the Big East? The whole thing just fell apart. It just turned into, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah that's a good the Big point. East. There's like nobody left. There's like Bunker Hill Community College is in it now. <laughs> I thought um, they were disbanding their program. They're, they're, they're still going to feel the team. Okay. Who are? Bunker, Bunker Hill. Hill. Bunker Hill, oh, yeah. All right. Absolutely. Uh, you know what it was? I was more of a BU guy. So okay. when the BU Terriers still had a, a right. football team, nice I used to go all the time. And um, a couple games a year. And then so we were kind of rivals. Like I always rooted in the bean pot. I always rooted, rooted for uh, Boston University. So, um, but I, I like the BC Eagles. But somehow I became an LSU fan. Really? Yeah. I've well, been to a game there. Oh, it took against, one. Against Alabama. 
and uh, yeah, we lost, sucked, but it yeah. was still a great time. Now, uh, Boston's pretty close to Philadelphia, um, right? Yeah, compared, a train ride. compared to like Chicago, yeah. <laughs> Depends <laughs> on where you're standing. Well, you, there's, there's a train between Philadelphia and Boston, right? Seems like you're trying to work this in. I am trying to work this in organically. <laughs> it's just, it's one of my favorite clips. I-95. If, if you haven't seen this on YouTube, and I hope you don't mind me bringing this up, it's... Uh, How dare you? Well, I, I'm going to do it. How what, dare you what? try and compliment me, you I, son I'm, of a gun? Maybe they will wait. Maybe there's not going to be... Did I already compliment you? So, you're in Philadelphia, and there's a, a show put on by... Uh, by, by some Pete Anthony show. Yeah, by some radio personalities. Traveling virus tour. Traveling what? <laughs> virus. And there's the infamous. A big lineup. It's one of the best lineups I've ever been on. It's you. The late, great uh, Patrice O'Neill. Dom Herrera. Dom Herrera, Jim Norton, Robert Kelly, uh, uh, Ralphie May, Tracy Morgan. That's a good lineup. Uh, who else was on? I can't remember. Some other people. So, so long ago. And so the long audience ago. is out of control. Audience is drunk, we're tired. In, we're in Philly. You're <laughs> just, you can just leave it at that. say. <laughs> Can I tell Greg Fitzsimmons' joke because it's so funny? Yeah, you might have to censor. I will. I will censor it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Greg, his yeah. joke about Philadelphia. What's it's that? like Italy made love to Ireland, but he didn't say make love. <laughs> 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 it's such a good joke. Yeah, that's Fitzy. about right. Sure there I actually like. Be honest when you watch the clip or whatever. Like, uh, I guess we should fast forward here, right? So whatever. So the first guy gets booed off stage, and I went on like. Uh, I don't know, a couple hours after that. So they were oh. good, good and liquored up. And, uh, but there's, there's a lot of um, myths about that, that you know, everybody was getting booed. And then I said, oh, I'm not taking this no more. That's not what happened. Um, You're Paul Bunyan. Come on. No, let, I just went the out legend. there. I went out there. And at that point, I didn't want to go on. And I was annoyed by the crowd. So I went out there, and I wasn't nervous, which is bad. And then I did some stupid cell phone joke that bombed, and then they booed me. That's the part that isn't there. So I kind of, you know, I'll take 50% of that. What was the cell phone joke? Um, I don't remember it, but it was also, it was already, they had been playing it in the radio promos to hype the show, so everybody had already heard it. Oh. So I might as well have gone out there like, hey, why'd the chicken cross the road? <laughs> I think my, Come my on, people! My favorite so, part of all that is just you counting down the time. The minutes and then, of like, set. Like, you, you say something and you're like, eight minutes, and I'm going to ride it out all eight minutes. And uh, I'm like, you got a great joke. You know joke. what bugs me about that set was I forgot to trash the 76ers. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I, I somehow forgot them. I got the Flyers. Yeah, you were big in on the Flyers. The, I got the Phillies. Yeah, I'm a hockey guy. Yeah, I know. So, so I remember really when they wore the them. pants, yeah. the, the socks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so but good. But Sixers would have been easy to trash. I would have just said, who do you got? All you got is Iverson. And the rest of the team is like this crowd, a bunch of losers going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> just throw some explicatives in there and it would have worked. Uh, but it was fun. And they were cool. And they, half of them ended up laughing about it. I was you know say, what, what, what you can't see on funny. the tape is right after Jim went out and he killed. And, uh, and that was the end of the show. So then right after that, they had to bring everybody out again. Like, <laughs> keep it going, blah, blah. So they bring me back out again and I'm getting booed. <laughs> And I'm looking down, and there's this kid who had run down, I don't know how many rows, and I can't flip the bird, but he was jumping up and down, giving me the finger, screaming, F you. <laughs> I was going, hey, Bill, I'm going, F you, F you, give me the finger. And I was going, I kept going, what? What? He's giving me the finger, like I don't know what he's doing. And he's going, F me. I got him literally jumping up and down, and I just kept going, what? What? I can't, uh. such a moron. <laughs> and I was standing next to Opie, and I think we, I think it was Opie. Whoever was next to me, we were just dying, la like, how stupid is this guy? Like, oh, that's great. Like, does he think the finger so means good. something else in a different city? Is that how you kind of handle hecklers? You just kind of go back at them? You got to just assess the situation. Sometimes you, you deserve it. Sometimes you said something wrong. I mean, I know, I know a comic one time used to get so offended by that, that people heckled. And I, was, and I was saying to a younger comic, I'm like, you know, it's just part of, the, part of the gig or whatever. And he goes, well, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. <laughs> He's like, when you go to a Broadway show, they don't heckle. It's like, well, then go book a Broadway show. <laughs> <laughs> Start singing there, twinkle toes. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's not like this is like a new phenomenon. It's always been every comic who starts. I mean, my biggest fear is, oh my God, what happens when somebody heckles me? What will happen? Like yeah. you know it's gonna happen. You just sit there praying that well, you know, they, it won't. They didn't used to sit for plays. You know, in, in Shakespeare's 
why Shakespeare recaps everything at the top of every act is because people would walk out and then come back in. It was a free-flowing thing. Yeah. And the, the term to br break a leg right. means this. I hope you get to the end of the play because when you bow, you break your leg backward. That's where that comes oh, from. Oh, that's where it came so from. So to say break a leg means only I hope you get to the end. That's all it means. Oh, I see. I always thought that that meant like you yeah, don't Americans say good are stupid. Luck. They don't investigate anything. To break a leg just means. Oh, you'll be another American tush, trash in America. No, I love uh, America. We got chilies. We got TGI Fridays. We got every form of diabetes you imaginable. All of them. Not those. And every, you know why those other countries don't like it because they're jealous. They're jealous of how fat and stupid we can get over here. <laughs> and we'll get better. So YouTube, uh, YouTube, YouTube, Bill Burr Philadelphia for enjoyment, which is your teaser to the Netflix, which is uh, running right now on Netflix. I'm sorry you feel that streaming. way. Streaming. I'm sorry you feel that way. The great Bill Burr. Thank you so oh, that's much. That's it. I was having such a good time. Stay. Just stay. stay. We'll stay forever. We're going to break. You stay. You should uh, guest host. He's like, no. I'm not going to guest host. I'll, 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 I don't want that. I like to be. I like being I'll the chiming in guy. show. Bill Moore, Bill Moore, we'll guest host. Rich Eisen, I'm not Rich Eisen. I can't read out loud. I could never do this. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.